I designed the whole, I, I prototyped it as, as well. So each part of the shoe I built myself. And um, with prototyping, with the process of trial and error, really, I would try these in shows, I would try them in rehearsals, uh, the different the different ways that we would assemble it. Um, and we ended up, it's almost like a puzzle in the back, in the heel section, where every single part of it makes it so stable, a stable structure. Because I didn't want the shoe where the dancer feels like they're almost on top of the pad and not a part of the shoe. So when you put on the shoe, it actually hugs your heel and, and makes it like a very stable structure to dance in. Hi, it's so great to meet you here on Zoom set. Yes, it's great to meet you, Petra. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. I, you know, I read about these uh, ballet shoes and I thought to myself, it can only be a ballet dancer who understands ballet shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been quite the process um, of building these shoes um, over the last 13 years, actually. Really? Um, yeah, it all stemmed from an injury I had actually in 2005. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to incorporate shock absorbing materials into my own shoes. Mm -hmm. And um, from that point forward, I couldn't um, dance without this shock absorbing material in my shoes. And in 2010, the manufacturer I was using discontinued the product. And I, from that point, saw the need for it in the dance community and for myself, actually, and uh, started to build it back then in the streets of Seattle, actually, uh, really? trying to find cobblers and people that specialize in building shoes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a kind of a wake up call of how hard it was going to be to build this. Well, it's uh, for me, it was really interesting because I uh, and and I um, also I'm a ballet mom. <laughs> I'm a, okay. So I understand a little bit about the the ballet shoes, but it's usually um, you think of the point shoes. I know my daughter had always problems with the point shoes, and but I never thought about um, men. You know, you you think about the ballet that that you call the ballet slipper, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. A ballet flat or a ballet slipper. Yeah. So you uh, you know this was what what I found so fascinating is that uh, that you actually you know um, had the need for to make something in in you know particularly for for you. Yes, yeah, it was. Um, it's been pretty amazing. It took forever to build this shoe, but we launched in April of uh, twenty twenty three, like three four months ago, mm -hmm. and seeing the feedback and seeing people put on the shoe and who's wearing it and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's really fun to see um, the shoe on the dancer's feet and getting the feedback of mm. like right away you can tell the difference. You know, you put on the shoe and there's a lift in the back. It's supportive. It's very structured. It's um, yeah, you you feel it right away, and uh, the feedback that we're getting is great. Um, and we're very dominantly selling in the female industry right now or the female market of the mm. dance industry it's, mm. it's definitely picking up uh pretty quickly so but but Seth you have to tell me now because it, it sounds you know you saying yeah and, and so that you built the shoe and now it's amazing but there must have been a process to that and like you said oh, you yeah. have to see people and uh at uh, did people tell you when you when you first uh, start out did people tell you it won't be possible yeah so in 2010 in the streets of seattle trying to find cobblers and uh the sampling process was really hard because the ballet showed so specific of uh, the way that it's made and it's a very craftsmanship shoe um and in 2014 i actually went to china for the first time to actually sit with manufacturers and get a reality check of like working with engineers overseas and seeing the process of how shoes are built and what they need. And in 2014, I was, I was trying, I thought I could just go to a manufacturer and say like, this is what I want. These are the time, the, the design 
as I have. And here's all the drawings. This is what I want. And pretty much they were like, well, how do we build it? You know, and that's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. in 2014, I was like, oh my gosh, okay. I thought I could just come here and you guys would just know how to build it. So during my time working with manufacturers, we worked with many manufacturers in China. Um, we worked with some manufacturers in Pakistan and it was really prototyping. Like we had prototype stages. I have hundreds of shoes just sitting right here. And it's just the prototyping process of really trial and error. And uh, with manufacturing, they wanted, most manufacturers just wanted to like put a, a pad and slap it in a pre-existing ballet shoe. And I was like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to actually revolutionize the ballet shoe and, and change the way that it's made. So we had to go back to like the drawing board and change the way that the actual shoe is assembled. So everything is sandwiched in between the shoes. So it's all built into the design. You cannot tell from the exterior or the interior that all the EVA foams and uh, structure are inside the shoe. Um, I couldn't go to market with something that looks like slapped together. It wasn't something that I wanted to do. I actually wanted to make a difference and make it uh, something special and for the dancer to look at it and be like, wow, a lot of, a lot of work went into this. And you can tell right away that it's, um, yeah, it's almost a work of art. Amazing. But also it's important for the dancer to be comfortable in these shoes. Yes. Yeah. And that's the first thing that you'll notice right away is the comfort level. Um, and just being, it's almost like dancing on a cloud. Like I could not go backwards. I tried in 20, I guess it was still in my New York ski ballet days, um, where I tried to go back to no padding and I was like, I cannot dance like mm -hmm. this anymore. Like it's mm -hmm. just so supportive and so, um, helpful for those long days for different performances. Um, yeah. But now do you have different, uh, designs for, for women and different for men or, or was it? Yes. Unique? So it's, it started as a unisex shoe mm -hmm. and we found with, in 2011, I did a kind of a survey study um, with San Francisco Ballet, New York City Ballet and Pacific Northwest Ballet, where I got feedback from the dancers at that time uh, of sizing, what they look for, um, brands that they wear, um, and if they incorporate some kind of shock absorbing material into their shoes already. And in that time, I found what size difference differences there are between female and male. So we actually made a female shoe and a male shoe. And the only difference between them are the width sizing. And the rest of the shoe is completely the same. All the EVA, the, the structure itself of the shoe is the same. And then it's just color variants is the other part of it. The women's are carried in pink and uh, two flesh tones at this point. And then the men's are four different colors with white, black, and then the two different flesh tones that we carry. But now, did you have to, you, you, uh, I mean, you were the one who had the problem with your feet. Um, yeah. So did you do the drawings and the design itself? Yes, yeah. I did. I, mm -hmm. I designed the whole, I, I prototyped it as, as well. So each part of the shoe I built myself and um, with prototyping, with the process of trial and error, really. I would try these in shows. I would try them in rehearsals, uh, the different the different ways that we would assemble it. Um, and we ended up, it's almost like a puzzle in the back in the heel section where every single part of it makes it so stable, a stable structure. Because I didn't want the shoe where the dancer feels like they're almost on top of the pad and not a part of the shoe. So when you put on the shoe, it actually hugs your heel and, and makes it like a very stable structure to dance in. Um, and then also having the benefits of helping with injury prevention, with long longevity, with fatigue, and then just all around comfort throughout uh, the dancer's day. And this, this really, the shoe can be for anyone. It's student level, it's uh, pre-professional, professionals, recreational dancers, adult dancers. It's really made for everyone in the dance industry. 
And it sounds as if it's well received uh, because you are at New York City Ballet. Yeah, so I so our launch in April. So I was a part of New York City Ballet from uh, 1999 through 2008, and mm. um, and then was a part of Pacific Northwest Ballet after that for 14 years. But um, yeah, so our launch was in April, and we did a New York launch. So we went everywhere. I've been kind of all over the U.S. right now, uh, kind of on a shoe tour. And uh, we started it in New York. So we started at New York City Ballet and I uh, had, I reserved shoes to actually give to the dancers for feedback and to see um, what dancers think of having padding in their shoes and, and the product, the sizing, um, all of those things. And so we started at New York City Ballet and uh, went to School of American Ballet, we went to American Ballet Theater, we went to Juilliard, um, and we went to uh, Dance Theater of Harlem as well, mm -hmm. and um, passed out shoes. And then we have a feedback loop that we get feedback from the dancers and just hearing back from the dancers on uh, what they think of the shoe. And the feedback has been really incredible. Um, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's been amazing to to hear from the dancers on uh, how much they like the shoe. But then also during my time, I see people doing the same thing I was doing, stuffing uh, shock absorbing materials into their shoes, gluing Dr. Scholl's all cut up inside their shoes and really seeing the need for a shoe like this in the industry um, is something that it makes it like all worthwhile because it's exactly like why I did Amazing. all of this was to help the next generations of uh, of dancers. But from New York, so I then I went to San Francisco Ballet. So I trained in San Francisco. I grew up and was born and raised in San Francisco and trained uh, at the San Francisco Ballet. And I had two brothers that were actually in San Francisco Ballet as well. But um, I went to San Francisco Ballet and did the same thing, passed out shoes to the company dancers there and received feedback. They went and took classes in them. And I stayed during during that time, usually about two hours and um, and hear how they like the shoe. And it's just overwhelmingly positive, the mm -hmm. feedback. And then from there, I went to Boston Ballet and did the same thing and, and passed out shoes, let them take class in them. And uh, yeah, and then we hear from, from them over the weeks uh, after I, I leave. I just let them have the shoes and uh, and hope that they have a good experience in them. And then from there, we went to Utah to Valley West and had our first pop up at uh, Art Emotion, um, which was really really fun to see all the adult dancers and how much they love the shoe and uh, how fast we pretty much sold all of our shoes that I had on me. Amazing. And then uh, recently I just went to LA and did uh, Catherine Morgan's intensive there in Huntington Beach um, and sold to the, the, the adult dancers there and I pop up and explain my story and background and why I've done this and, and the difference between the Orson Pro One and a conventional ballet shoe. And then from there went to uh, CPYB, um, Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet and did the same thing for the students there and explained the story and my background and uh, the why um, mm. and the problem that I'm trying to solve with this kind of shoe. Well, you must, I mean, you you have a authority because you understand and you've been a dancer yourself, but it's amazing how this has developed since Mar since April, since it's, uh, since it's been launched. Uh, so you've you've come from a ballet dancer to designer to businessman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. It's like every part of it is uh, pretty much learning on the fly. I've had a lot of help them. I've uh, investors mm -hmm. that kind of guide me, and I have uh, mentors that have uh, helped me throughout this process. Mm -hmm. um, um, like in 2014, I have a mentor, he owns a, a brand in Canada and he was, I was talking with him. I danced with his wife at Pacific Northwest Ballet and he 
knew about the shoe and I told him about it. And he was like, why don't you come with me on a business trip and I can introduce you to the factories, the whole process and actually get more insight into how it works. And um, yeah, so during this process, I've had a a lot of guidance and and help. Mm -hmm. So. Well, amazing that people had faith in in your idea, because I think that's also important, you know, to have the idea and to have faith in in the idea. But then you need people also to come on board and have faith in that idea. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually uh, it was like 50 50. It could have gone either way. You know, every time mm-hmm. I go into a pitch or I go into a studio and it's I always get super nervous right before uh, because I don't know how people are going to react, you know, mm-hmm. but overall, since April, it's just been like almost 100 percent positive, uh, which is pretty amazing um, after building this. And I was very quiet about this whole thing for 13 years, uh, trying to keep it very, uh, just under the radar. Mm -hmm. And then, so when we launched, it would be, um, more impactful. Yeah. But now tell me, how did your career in ballet start? Yeah. So I was, so I'm from a dancing family. So I was like born and bred in uh, the ballet world. Uh, I started when I was four. I have five siblings. They were all dancers. I have two brothers and three sisters. And, uh, my parents were both dancers as well. And, um, Amazing. really I was brought up dancing, you know, I danced throughout my adolescence years. And, um, when I really started to take it seriously, it was my first time to New York, which was 1994 and I was 12. And it was the first time where I really saw, the potential and being in Lincoln Center and going to the shows and taking class with like Brishnikov in the classroom and wow. uh, just seeing like how, what could be possible. Mm-hmm. And that was the moment for me when I was like, okay, this is what I want to do for my profession. Like, this is what I want to do. These are my goals. And I uh, went to School of American Ballet when I was 15. So I studied at San Francisco Ballet from age 10 through 15, or maybe a little bit younger than 10, and then left San Francisco and moved to New York um, when I was 15 and studied with School of American Ballet for uh, two years and then was accepted into New York City Ballet um, at 17. Uh, And then, yeah, my career uh, went fast there. It was really, really fun. You know, like being in the school of American Valley, I did four summer courses from 94 through, or, uh, 97. And, um, yeah, it was all of our, all of the people that all of my colleagues, all of my friends, we all kind of went up together. My wife and I met in New York back then. Um, And we all kind of grew up together and then we were in the companies together and uh, it was a very um, fun time uh, being on stage, sharing the stage, getting the experience with your, with your friends and um, really growing all together. Yeah. Well, the ballet world um, and and especially in a company, it is like that because you work hard, you, and especially if you trained, you know, as youngsters, then it is sort of um, this little family, you know, that and, and supporting yeah. each other. So, yeah, yeah no. it's funny. It's like mm-hmm. everything. Everyone that we knew back then has such a big part in the industry now, mm-hmm. and it's uh, mm-hmm. just really fun to have been part of that. And mm-hmm. even so, in our SAB days, everyone went from School of American Ballet to other big companies like Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest Ballet, Joffrey, Miami City Ballet. And um, yeah, when my wife and I left New York City Ballet and came to Pacific Northwest Ballet, we had so many friends here as well that we grew up through the school years with. And then we got to share the stage experience with them as well. And um, yeah, it's, it was, it's, was really amazing, you know, and then every level of like my career and sharing it with my wife on stage and dancing with her. And then we had our daughter Lola and then sharing our experience and bringing her on tours and, um, 
having her backstage watching us dance and kind of incorporating our whole family into it was uh it was it's been it was really amazing so Beautiful. i'm very fortunate yeah and will she also be dancing you think my daughter no yeah. we tried uh but she was not really into it um, oh, which is okay. totally fine she wants to be a singer so she does oh, okay. rock. she is like <laughs> yeah it's like uh it's so fun they do um like different rock uh songs and they cover the songs and they do shows and she does lead singing and that's what she likes to do and they do great songs blondie journey uh Amazing. Outfield, like all of the the songs mm. that you would know so it's pretty fun well she comes from an artistic home so it's it's great that she can express herself like that yeah and she found her own way you know and she found mm. like what she likes to do which is it's really cool to see and she's very good at it and she definitely has the stage presence for it which is really fun to see yeah well she she grew up um seeing that you know and and being comfortable at on a stage yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, it's it's pretty great but now Seth, um tell me this the back to the shoe do you think in your yeah. career if you had something like that uh it would have prevented this injury that you got um i think it it would have helped with it mm -hmm. um so with the injury that i had in 2005 i uh injured my plantar fascia and i couldn't dance like i couldn't walk on it i couldn't step um and i had to be sidelined you know and during this time i had a procedure done to my foot and it didn't really help so the doctor that i was working with back then um recommended that i start looking at shock absorbing materials to take away the pain and actually get rid of the plantar fasciitis that i had at the time and uh it was really the only thing that worked for me was having my heel lifted the stress of um really jumping walking all that stuff was taken away um so i can only think that this would help someone with that condition mm -hmm. you know like something bone bruising uh achilles tendonitis that kind of stuff and we actually have a a, a full med team behind this and we're going to be doing a study about the shoe coming in the fall uh with the university of Puget sound uh, down in Tacoma um, with Karen Steer, and we're gonna we're gonna see the difference between the conventional shoe and uh, the Orsa Pro One, the posture changes, the the benefits of wearing such a shoe, really the changes biomechanically that happen with wearing something like this in your shoe. And I did a preliminary study actually in 2014 with uh, Protentrix down in uh, downtown Seattle, and we already saw that there are possible benefits of wearing such uh shock absorbing materials in your shoes um so i think when um when we see more feedback and start seeing more people in the shoes and getting more feedback from the community i think we're we're going to see a lot more positive uh impacts on on dancers careers um and we've We've already been hearing from the dance community at this point um, where some dancers were not taking class and they couldn't finish class because of whatever uh, tendonitis or injury was preventing them to do so. And they started wearing these shoes and they're already feeling better. They can finish class. Um, so it's, it's, it's really positive what we're seeing so far. Yeah, because you you mentioning the posture, but it's also the uh, uh, if the heel, if you say if there's a, a cushion or a something for the heel, then the posture will uh, change a little bit when you wear that shoe because it's not you're not flat on the right on the ground. Yeah, yeah, it makes you feel like you're more on your toes. You know, oh, it pushes okay. you a little bit more mm -hmm. forward and kind of where you want to be um i love dancing in these shoes i still dance here and there and i i do guestings and uh i love wearing these shoes uh mm -hmm. this is exactly what i would have wanted in my career what i wore was not something that was uh suitable you know and it 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 did the job that it needed to do in the time mm -hmm. that it that i wore them but if i would have had something that 
actually the shoe is built around the shock absorbing material, it would have been so much better. Um, yeah, because and also uh, having an injury like that or a injury in ballet, it puts you out sometimes for a year that you can't dance and that, you know, if that could be yeah. prevented by something like having a proper shoe. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've been mo sidelined multiple times throughout my career for different injuries. And um, yeah, this would help with certain, certain aspects and pains that a dancer goes through. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But now, Seth, uh, amazing. I'm really so um, in awe of what you did because it took such a long time. And you, how did you keep yourself motivated to to carry on? And uh, uh, because it took such a long time. Yes, it did. Um, yeah, I thought I could do this really quickly. You know, in 2010 mm -hmm. and 2014, when I actually went to China for the first time, and I worked. In China from 2014 to 2017 and then um, in 2018 went to Thailand and that's where everything is built now mm -hmm. but through the process I'm just very committed when I really focus on doing something and I'm persistent and okay. um, I really believe in what I'm doing I really believe in the product that I made and I saw the potential of helping other dancers as well. And um, I think that's what kept me going. You know, there's there's days where I was like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? Like, is this even going to be something that dancers like? Um, but wearing it myself and prototyping and then talking with other dancers about what they've done in, in their past and seeing people trying to mock up shoes the same way I was doing it. I just saw that this could be something so special for the dance community. Um, and that's kind of what kept me going. And um, yeah. So now I have to ask you, what did it feel like um, at the launch? Was it, uh, was it what you expected? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really awesome. It was really cool. Uh, it was really nerve wracking because it was the first time that I was actually like we went live with our website, I think, March 31st. Uh, mm -hmm. April 2nd was the first day in New York where I actually went to ABT and to ABT2 and saw a lot of my friends, a lot of my colleagues over the years. Um, the ballet world is so small. And uh, so I got to see a lot of my friends and they've known about it but they've never seen it, they've never worn it. And then seeing like the ABT students uh, in the pre-professionals, in the shoe, testing it, giving me their feedback like right away, going to School of America Ballet, going to Juilliard, going to New York City Ballet and actually seeing dancers in it and having to talk to them. And uh, it was really nerve wracking, but it was also really exhilarating. And, um, and then we had a launch party there as well and a lot of my friends came out um from my new york city valley days and uh seeing people i haven't seen in 20 years from my sab days were there and wow. um showing them the shoe showing them what I've, I've been doing explaining the whole process to all of them and actually just hanging out with them was um was a really good moment for me um after amazing. all these years yeah and no, amazing yeah. now i really applaud you for that for for sticking Thank out you. and you know really and <laughs> and your perseverance and and believing in yourself and believing in your product but now you. um you've come this far but now what is the what is the dream now what is the wish still yeah so now we're we've gotten the feedback from the dance community we see the need for the shoe, the, really the product has uh, proof of concept at, at this point, you know, and now it's just about providing the shoe in different varieties of sizing, colors, materials. Um, I own the IP in this, so the intellectual property is owned by Orza. I filed the patent in 2013, and that was a whole other process that took eight years to do. Um, and from here, we can build, we can use this technology or this component section in other shoes as well, like jazz shoes, sneakers, uh, oh, wow. dance 
uh, boots and all that. And that's kind of where we're going to go is we're going to scale it up. We have leather shoes coming right now. Um, the only material that's available is canvas, okay. uh, which we wanted to start at. And we have uh, leather shoes coming in uh, pink, black and white in August. They should be landed in the States. Uh, and they're just in production now. And uh, from there, we're going to do a narrow size run and then a wide width run as well. Okay. Um, so then we can hit every part of uh, mm -hmm. the dance community. Because um, right now we went with a medium run of the width um, just to see where the sizing is. It was kind of a guessing game of how, where we could get the shoe at with and get as much data as we could from the dance community about sizing. Um, and at this point we received that and now we're trying to move forward and, and grow and scale um, really as fast as possible. So now it's more focused on ballet. Yeah, yeah, okay. but this shoe can go into other genres of dance as well. Um, like anyone that wears a ballet slipper or ballet flat uh, can wear the shoe. Okay. Yeah, and we're also now going into uh, retail stores as well. So we oh, partnered okay. with Freedom London, uh, and we're carried in New York wow. City, which is a, which is a really big deal because e-commerce is a very hard thing to do with a ballet shoe and sizing of feet. Mm. <laughs> and um, so when I do the pop-ups or uh, having partnerships like the Free Freed of London in New York is is huge for us because the dancers can go there and try on the shoes and actually see the difference and and get the right size so it fits perfectly. Uh, and then we're also in two stores here in um, Seattle, uh, the Seattle area. We're in Camp and uh, Renton, Washington at uh, Dancewear Center. Okay, next you're coming to Europe. Yes, uh, <laughs> we're trying to get international shipping. We just have to figure out customs, and it's just very complicated uh, mm -hmm. getting shipping to Europe, to Canada, to um, Australia, and then yeah, we've we're we're working in that direction. And actually, there are shoes in Europe, there are shoes in Canada, and there are shoes in uh, Australia at this point. Because so I I allocated about. I would say 250 shoes of the first shipment. Um, and I had them delivered to my house so I could send them to all my friends, all the choreographers that I worked with, all of uh, the different influencers in the in the dance uh, industry and that I've known and worked with, worked with throughout my career and uh, actually gave them a pair of shoes and and to give them my their feedback and mm -hmm. uh, it's been really fun, like getting people's uh, feedback. Um, yeah, we have just so many out there. There's, uh, there's. Have you sent to Vienna State Ballet yet? Sorry. Have you sent some to Vienna State Ballet yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. It's usually just individuals I'm sending to right now. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just choreographers and people with very high uh, influence and. In, the dance industry mm -hmm. um, that I was fortunate enough to work with throughout my my career. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the shoes here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do too. Let that be on the wish list. <laughs> yes, it is. It is, and there it's fun because uh, I think it's going to pick up pretty quickly. Like I, even at the pop ups, people are coming in from Europe, from London, from uh, different parts of the world and the shoes go out to them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and or they take them with them to where they're going and they're going to advocate for the brand and the product and show other dancers. And I think it's just something that uh, dancers are going to see. And we actually hear a lot on social media from uh, Europe and uh italy and uh really everywhere where Amazing. they're like when are you shipping to us <laughs> you know and it's like <laughs> soon soon we're trying that's um, that's but... the next one on the wish list <laughs> yes definitely definitely conquer the world with your ballet shoes yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and make a difference and help uh definitely definitely answers I can... everywhere yeah you know? 
Now, I, I now understand the ballet shoe issue. So I can just imagine that that would be very popular all over. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Seth, thank you so much for your time. And thank you. This story is absolutely amazing. Let me know. Oh, thank you is, so much for having yeah. me. Yeah. Now, let me know when you come to Vienna. And yeah. I would love to meet yeah. you in person. Yeah, I would love to meet you too. Yeah. So, but have a lovely uh, afternoon. Okay. Thank you. And, and you have a lovely evening, right? It's, yes, it's... I'm in my evening already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, great. Steve. okay Thank bye. you. Bye.